Ah, here we are. This is it. This is the start. We're at Overston, start of the Cumbria Way. 70 odd, nearly 80 odd miles over five days. That's the way we're heading. Let's get a move on. So we're already about a mile and a half in and for quite a few miles this first section takes you through a lot of farmland so uh, as you can see I'm probably a tractor down there at farm fields we've just come through a farm walked up through a bit of woodland but as you can see we're out in beautiful countryside lots of nice type of meadowy open fields which is nice I just need to uh, get all the provisions I need, but this sort of stuff plays have up with my hay fever, so plenty of beckoners up my nose and pretty tons. I should be right. The hills are starting to open out now, look. Right over back down to Barrowing Furnace. All that at cost. And there. Uh, the staple of any hiking long distance walk, jelly babies and peanut M&M's I've got two bags of that in my waist pouch keep me going so that's a uh, another farm that we've just come through so that's two farms we've come through now so to, as you come out of Roverston you can see a link distance just there so we've come through one farm there across fields countryside through this farm we're on this track now so like I was saying earlier this sort of first stage of this through a lot of this sort of countryside farming sort of countryside stuff it's nice walking but now we're starting to see a bit of the actual Lake District and we can start seeing them uh, mountains and that that's where we're heading it's looking better Look at that for a lovely little pog little fishing stool and a little pond there that's a nice little uh, touch at side at road at side at garden. Not sure what this little village is called, but it's uh, really nice. Love to live in a little village like this. Say it everywhere I go when you come across these lovely little villages like this. Nicely tucked away in the countryside and that. Absolutely fantastic. So that's another farm. We've come through just back down there, but I'm back out into open countryside now. Albeit it is farming land, but it's uh, it's unavoidable. It's unavoidable, should I say? It is part of the route, but it is. It's uh, it's nice countryside, and while it's a nice sunny day like what it is, there's a, a gentle breeze. But it is a gentle breeze. But it's. Uh, it's not too warm just yet. No idea what temperature is, but up to now it's steady going. So then we can just about see Coniston water. I don't know whether they'll make it out on GoPro, but just down there we can see Coniston water. We've got the Coniston mountain range just here, Old Man Dow Crag to the left. And looking over to uh, sort of Crinkle Crags and Bofell beyond there, as well as Swirl Owl Weatherlam, the uh, Copper Mine Valley just in there. Come down that, that's a fantastic place in there. But yeah, we can see Coniston water just down there. I think we're about six mile mark somewhere around there now. Well, that's our destination for tonight. 
we'll walk alongside of Coniston Water into Coniston and then hopefully we're going to be finding a campsite for, uh, for tonight So while we're on route, I'm drinking, I've got my two 600ml bottles of water here that I've put in electrolyte tablets in So I've just said to Paul here, when we, uh, you know like when we top up with water and filter with water when we come across these grit bins I wonder if we put a bit of salt in water, would it have the same effect? <laughs> So this is probably the first sort of section at walk where we where you sort of get a sense that you're actually in the Lake District Fells as such. As you can see we're, we're sorted away from farmland and farms and all that sort of stuff. Even though down in valleys you know there are farms you can still see them in everything fields, farm fields, cows and sheep and that but you sort of get where we are at the minute. We're about a mile away from Beacon Town which like I say, we sort of do, or at the current moment we get that feeling that we are actually in the fells and elevation wise at the minute we're about 170 metres which for today is actually the highest point because we don't actually do any sort of high elevation stuff today that's going to come mainly on day three because tonight, we, like I was saying earlier on, we, we arrive in Coniston and then tomorrow we, uh, we've we got quite a short day actually tomorrow, we only do about 11 mile we arrive at Langdale's up in Langdale Valley and we're going to be wild camping tomorrow night at top end of the valley up there and then that's when the elevation starts for proper go up these stakes, pass up onto the tops up there so that is going to be the Day three is going to probably be the harder of the days, you know, elevation climbing wise. But yeah, like I say, 170 metres, and it's not been that much of a pull, and we're on his way back down now. We're losing elevation, like I say, on his way over to Beacon Town. We, uh, we're going to have half an hour there, take packs off, deep feet in water, get a bit of something to eat, and have a little rest. Right then, in front of me is now a nice view of Beacon Town. Well, this is where we're going to get bags off for a bit. We're going to have maybe half an hour or so here, 40 minutes or something. Dip his feet in water. We're going to take a bit of water on board because we've both just been saying they were feeling a little bit thirsty. Even though I've, I've got some water left in here, but it's not a great deal. So we're going to get a good glug of water, get a good litre in us, filter some more top up. And like I say, have half an hour, 40 minutes here, dip his feet in water and have a, a little bit of a rest. And maybe a bite to eat or something. Yep, I found a centre, nice little spot here. I get bags off for a bit. And it's quite busy up here. There's a couple of women over there. They've just been saying that they've been in swimming. It's lovely and warm. There's, there's two or three folk over there. There's some, some folk just on the corner over here. It looks like they've been swimming, so... Right, it is a popular spot for a, a bit of a swim this but yeah I'm just gonna get bags off I might dip my feet in there just to cool the feet off a bit oh I can't tell you how nice that is I'm on in up to the shins like, but it's, uh, as we saying to Paul, it's not, it's not cold, it's, it's nice. Like them women were saying over there, I could, you say if we were camping up here tonight, I could easily be in here for a swim, I'll tell you that for now, definitely. In fact, there's some in just over there. Like I was saying, there's, it's quite busy down here, there's a few folk routes that come from to the lake. 
There's somebody in swimming over there. Who can blame them? What a beautiful spot this is. No, I've not been swimming. I've just had my little trundle out there, knee deep in water, nice and refreshed. My feet are nice and refreshed now, so I've got my trail shoes back on. I've just been down and had a little refresh on the face and head. So it's not been too bad with temperatures that were forecast, it was supposed to be like 22 degrees on that today, but there has been a bit of a breeze in and out. So, although we have sweated a bit, we're not actually wet through with sweat, dripping with sweat, if you know what I mean, but... I am. Oh, <laughs> but always. <laughs> yeah, so it's always good to, every time you find a piece of water like this or whatever, have a little dunk, wet your feet, soak your feet, have a little refreshing, get a bit of water on your face and your head. So yeah, I think we'll be get it packs on in a minute and heading off. Just been looking at map, like I was saying when we first arrived here, we're at about nine mile mark. Once we get over the other side of town, just have it back of there, it's all downhill then. About three mile alongside of Coniston Water. And then we head into Coniston where we're hopefully gonna find this campsite for night. Probably get a nice shower tonight and uh, make use of the facilities. So Right, I'll catch up with you in a bit when we're heading that way. Right then, we're leaving one view behind there, Beacon Town. And then, look at this for a view. That is what we're walking into, look at that. How fantastic is that? Well, that is where we're heading now. Straight down into that lot. Straight down to Coniston Water, walking alongside of there. And this is what we're gonna be looking at for at least the rest of today anyway. Well, we're just crossing over the little bridge here. Actually, looks quite a nice little spot this. Nice little uh, faucet line, nice, nice little Lake District River coming down there. Little falls and cascades of it, rocks and that. Lovely little spot. Right then, so we've just come down off the other side of the road back up there and we've hit the side of Coniston Water now. So we're literally at about 12 mile we've got about three mile alongside of here to do and just shy at top end that's where we head off so to in towards coniston and into campsite and uh, see if we can uh, or see if we're allowed to camp up at the campsite hopefully we are just rocking up because we've not booked in a out like that so hopefully they'll let us uh, camp there for night be nice to be able to like i was saying earlier make use of the facilities and get a nice shower so this particular stretch alongside of coniston water here looks like they're doing a bit of forestry work there's signs up everywhere keep to path danger all, all out here there's a, a lot of trees that have been cut down and been trimmed up right they're easier so they're doing taking some trees down obviously for timber for wood furniture etc right then as you can see we're at coniston hall campsite it is just gone 10 past eight and we're literally passed through here about seven o'clock maybe just a four quarter to seven or something like that and we're we'll saying uh it was a nice looking campsite, we didn't realise this was the place that we'd sort of 
pinpointed where we were going to stay but we had to walk the extra mile into Coniston so we could get some cash because it's cash only so as you do we call for a pint and a few fuel supplies got some cash walked the mile back to the campsite we yeah, paid £15 and eat and that's us pause just over there and that's where I am there so we've got showers just up there we're both going to go and get a shower come back chill out get some tea I don't go and while we're down in Coniston village we uh, getting a few refreshments we've got a few cheeky drinks as well so like I said just going about 10 past 8 I think quite a past 8 now time to chill so well then good morning it's 10 past 7 been up about 20 minutes quite an hour or something like that already been down to the block Luke's toilet got freshened up got my first brew on go and uh, it's a lot cooler this morning there's a bit of a breeze it's overcast so we decided last night well, we're sort of going to get up when we got up and sort of be packed up and ready for going for about 8 o'clock so once we've had a bit of breakfast and stuff and got packed up it's not a setting stone setting off time 8 o'clock somewhere around there so yeah, once we've had a bit of breakfast and we're ready we'll be getting up trail getting a few miles in while it's nice and cool this morning not reach yet forecast so we checked it before we set off and it was supposed to be like five days with the sun so I won't imagine that's changed much it was, uh, it was sort of like this on my in yesterday as we were driving up but uh, yeah it's all come nice and warm so I'm expecting it to do the same today so I brew and a bit of breakfast I'll probably fetch you back when we're all packed up and ready to start walking again in the trail Right then, we're all packed up. I know we're camping on a campsite, but we still leave no trace, even though on this campsite it does look as though they do allow them to have fires. If you can see there, there's like fire scars and little fire pits all over, but they must allow them to do it because there's quite a few knocking about. But yeah, my ethos is I leave no trace as always. So yeah, day two, we've got about 12 miles to walk today into Langdale's, uh, but we're going to Walking to Coniston first, Paul needs to get some charge in his, his power bank. So we're going to have a steady stroll back into Coniston, try and find a little coffee shop or something like that where he can plug his charger in. And then it's uh, quite a steady day. It's looking a little bit overcast this morning. A little bit cooler this morning as well, which is only a good thing. Uh, let's uh, get going. So here we are in the Black Bull pub. Well, uh, Paul charges his charger up. I have a, a butty and a cup of sausage butty. It's got to be HP brown sauce on it. Absolutely beautiful. So that is the Black Bull pub. Lovely sausage uh, sarnie in there, a nice brew this morning. That has definitely hit the spot. So let's get going now. So this is a, a nice little interesting spot that we've just come across. We've just been reading it sign inside there and it's a late 19th century, so that's late 1800s. Uh, a foxhound store. So back in late 1800s, early 1900s, used to keep the hounds in there, the fox hunting hounds. Very interesting. Just look at this, now we're talking, it's been saying we actually feel as though we're among the fells now, looking all down that lot. So the first part of today's route is we go up and around Tarnows and then we drop off the other side of there down into Elter Water, down into the village there and we'll probably stop somewhere around there again, maybe at a little cafe or or a pub and get a pint or something like that and then from Elter Water we walk along the Langdales into Langdale Valley 
Well, again tonight we're hoping to get on campsite. It's a National Trust campsite up there. I forget the name on it now, but we are hoping to get in there. But if not, they won't allow us on just rocking up for a one night. We're going to probably get something to eat at Pub at Old Dungeon Girl there and then walk up valley to, right to the top end, camp up beside it, river up, up, up there somewhere. So it'll be a win win no matter what. Campsite or a wild camp tonight. Well, just look at that view now. Starting to uh, see some big, big boys looking across valley there. Absolutely beautiful. We've just passed down through the Tarnows National Trust and this is have a look in the tarns. Absolutely beautiful this. There's a nice breeze here as well. As we've come up that bit of a climb up road there, as I was saying earlier, cloud covers breaking up now. Got a little bit of warmth in that sun, so I've taken my mid layer off or my top layer, my uh, fleecy top. Got the sunscreen, sun lotion slapped on. Don't want no burnt neck and uh, burnt calves today, that's for sure. Yeah, this is uh, absolutely lovely. This, look at this for the place, stunning. Well, I've been noticing as we're passing through the trail that passes alongside at Tarn House here, we're seeing a lot of this, a lot of these trees that are uprooted. You can see looking back down the path there's a lot of trees that have been blown over, well assuming blown over, but they've certainly sort of way uh, we've noticed that where a lot of a lot of them have blown over where roots have been into the ground. It's very rocky and uh, there's a lot of stone underneath where roots are. So as as we've been saying, you sort of I don't know if you can see just in back of that one there, where all that root's been pulled out at ground there. There's a lot of rock in it, and it's not sort of soft ground where roots can get a good, you know, a good foothold into the ground and hold, it, hold the tree solid. First, uh, you know, obviously a, a strong enough storm comes through. That uh, looks like what's happened, it's blown a lot in the mother. Well then this is Skelwith Bridge where we've just been to the cafe just around the corner there vegan place like but we had a nice little pasta there and a nice little cheeky bottle of cider but that is the Skelwith Bridge it's sent just there it's a lovely little spot I've just been saying to Paul we've sat up in the cafe up there and had a, like I said, bite to eat and that we ought to have come down here and took his shoes off and dipped his feet in the river for a bit, soaked his feet but oh well but yeah, we're, uh, we're about a mile from Elterwater and then it's literally about three mile up the Great Langdale Valley up the Langdale Valley then up to the uh, old Dungeon Gillies like I've already said, that is where we're hoping to camp tonight up either at the National Trust Centre uh, camp, campsite or if not, like I was saying, we're going to have to sort of walk about another mile up the valley at the bottom end of the Stakes Pass and find a place up there. So yeah, I think we're going to like get a few pictures of that here. It's a lovely idyllic little spot as you can see. And then we'll make his way up to Elta Water and carry on, carry on with the route. Look at this for a fantastic little spot just here. This is out of water just here, looking straight up to Langdale Pikes there, what a fantastic little spot this is. There's somebody there, I've just been watching her, she's uh, sketching there and painting that view. 
Absolutely amazing that in it. So just before we start heading up the Great Langdale Valley up to Old Dungeon Gill, just calling it chapel style here. Little cooperative shop. Stopped on a, up on a few supplies and a nice little cold ice cream. Why not? Oh, we're making his way up to uh, Old Dungeon Gill, top end at Langdale Valley. And look at that for a view, absolutely fantastic that. Them's the Langdale Pikes just on that pointy one there is Addison Stickle, and the one over that side is Piker Stickle. Loft Crag just in front of it. Up there you've got like sort of pavy arc and that fern car not of it back of there. Absolutely beautiful up there. I've camped on Harrison Stickle a few years ago back, back now. But I definitely want to get back up there and do a bit more camping up on there. An absolutely stunning place this. And of course this weather helps. Let's just look at this, it's absolutely glorious. Since about 11 o'clock this morning there's not been a cloud in the sky. It's probably about 22, 23 degrees. There's a slight breeze. It's absolutely perfect. And then you get views like that. What's not to love about this, eh? Absolutely brilliant. Right then, here we are. We're Finally pitched up. This is the Great Langdale campsite. This is the National Trust one. We're we'll come to come to wish for better. Had a bit of apprehension about this one. This was the one that was sort of stating on the website minimum a two night stay, but when we've got here, they allow walk-ins. We've got it for eleven pound a piece, so it's absolutely fantastic. So I just got pitched up. We've got fantastic views of uh, that side pike just there. And then I think there's Lingmore Fell just over that way. That's a side pike, it's not a Wainwright, but Lingmore Fell is. When I complete it, Wainwrights, Lingmore Fell will my second to last Wainwright. And if you can, uh, long time subscribers to the channel will be able to remember when I did me, finished my Wainwrights, I did Lingmore Fell and drove to Wanister. Went up Fleet with, Fleet with Pike and camped on Fleet with. So yeah, that was uh, a cracking couple of nights there, that one. But yeah, we're looking back up, back up the Langdale Valley, up to the Crinkles up there, Crinkle Crags. And we've got Bofell just round the corner, hid by them trees. So yeah, like I said, got tent pitched. We're going to enjoy a couple of drinks which we've bought from shop, get rest of my kit out. And we're going to chill out and enjoy this... Uh, Beautiful sunny evening. Right, well, it's bang on nine o'clock now. The bit of breeze that we had earlier on it being into evening sort of dropped off. Sunset over that way over at back of Crinkle Crags and Scarfell Pike. We've had a few tree cheeky drinks. They were all fed and watered. But because that breeze has dropped, there's quite a lot of midges about. So we're getting pestered by them. So that's a pain in the backside, but I'm getting quite tired now. So I've just been saying to Paul not be long before diving in here and getting chilled out and getting laid in the bag. And uh, there's, there's, no, there's no signal up here in Langdale Valley, so not be catching up on any socials or out like that. So. Phone's plugged into it, charger, charging up. Once that's at hundred percent, I'll be turning it phone off and uh, leaving that at that. Just need to charge my watch up. And I think that's about that. Got uh, a few more treat. I've got I've got half a bag of nuts left that I'm gonna chomp on once I get in there. But yeah, that's about it, I think. Unless I fetch you back a little bit later on before I'm ready for one Atlanta nod. 
we'll, uh, we'll catch you tomorrow. Well, I think we're going to be up bright and early again in the morning. We've uh, sort of a loose plan of setting off for 8 o'clock. Because we've got quite a, a long walk up the uh, Langdale Valley up towards where we're going to be heading up. Um, the Stakes Pass. It's quite a climb that. I've done that two or three times and come down it. It's quite a steep climb that. But uh, yeah. Right. I'm going because these midges are absolutely doing my nutting. If I don't catch you later on before I go to bed, I'll see you in the morning.